You know, when you work real hard to build a big plane and have a substantial amount of build time and money in it, you become a little more safety conscious. You see, if something goes wrong when flying a heavy six pound nitro plane, it could hurt you and or the innocent bystanders alike. So again, I can't stress enough the importance of checking your equipment thoroughly so you have a fair chance to. And it can't hurt to join the AMA to get that tremendous liability coverage that comes with it. You know, most model ports do not allow non-AMA members to fly there anyway because, well, what could go wrong? Okay, here's the setup that I'm going to use today, folks. First of all, I'm using the Exceed RC transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz. And let's go ahead and turn that on right now and the 2.4 gigahertz receiver and satellite receiver. Turnergy servo, the uh, HK UBEC 3 amp and a uh, Gravity Hobbies uh, 1300 milliamp battery pack and then my backup battery is a 300 milliamp nickel metal hydride. This will run my servos in plane for about five minutes actually. So uh, this is going to be the backup battery. This is Century System battery backup and I'm sure they make newer ones and more modern ones than this is the old one that I had in the old days. Um, it had a pretty good circuit board in there all set up. Now when this is on, main power in, let's go ahead and flip this thing on real quick. Plug in my main power. Okay, the UBC is on, battery battery is on, the main power indicator is on green okay everything is working let's make sure that the servo is working and yes it is okay all right let's go ahead and plug in this backup battery and that is now in the circuit okay so what happens if your power from this battery quits or runs dead or the power from your UBEC or the UBC itself dies, it's the same as unplugging the power. So let's unplug this. And you'll see right away the battery backer has switched to auxiliary. It's running now on this 300 milliamp battery. And you see the servo is still working, no problem. So that's a uh, excellent backup. Now you can actually do this with an electronic speed controller too. So I'm actually going to show you how you could take this battery, if you're going to fly electrics, and turn this into another one of these. And I wrote an article on it years ago in the uh, Radio Helicopter magazine uh, in Europe and also in Model Airplane News in, in the United States. So uh, let's take a look at that and how that could work. You know, I like this new PT-19 four-stroke a lot. and. Uh, you know, you just, when you have a plane like this, you can't have too many backups. Well, back when I was a distributor for the Ishimasa Skylark EH-1, that was the first ever production electric helicopter in the world, I began my electric tail rotor experiments and also the battery backups. I was writing articles of my progress and sending them pictures and they were being printed in the RC mags around the world including the famed Radio Helicopter International magazine in Europe. Well many folks began experimenting after I wrote these articles and many folks experimented with my ETRM for sure. You know, we were still flying NICADs in those days and they were heavy and the run times were only two to two and a half minutes on this helicopter. So just think what it could be today with the LiPos and a battery backup. Well, my article on the landing battery for the helicopters and planes was pretty similar setup to the receiver backup that I just showed you, except now it had to drive the power motor instead of just the servos. So that meant that I had to design and make a circuit that would actually handle that high current. And that high current really was only about 1.5 amps, that's all we had then. Well, I wound up using a heavier relay, I modified it with an arming switch, 
I drew up the schematic and I flew it with great success. So I sent it off to all the magazines with pictures. And, and as you can see, the theory was just the same. Uh, I would run the relay with the main battery and when it got low, the relay would release and the fresh battery would kick in so you could land. Well, of course, today you could easily put in two batteries in the same plane of the same uh, milliamp rating and simply switch over with the relay by automatic or you could do it with the fifth channel when it started getting low for more power. It'd be like adding a second tank of gas. And with today's electrics, I think you're going to see more backups like mine show up with more and more, and especially with the bigger planes it can handle. Okay, let's couple up a couple of 4800 milliamp lipos and a relay and double our jet flying time. Because if it sounds stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs>